So stuttering John, because Red Bar and Anthony Cumia are not friends. In fact, mm-hmm. Mike David worked at Compound Media for a very short time. They had a falling out. And so because he doesn't like Anthony, our friend Stuttering John thought, oh, I'm going to team up with Red Bar. And he's been saying on his show lately, I love Red Bar. I love what they're doing. They're great. So this is Mike David explaining that John's been trying to DM him on Instagram. Oh. Yeah, this is hilarious. Stuttering John's been in this big feud where him and Kumbia go back and forth screaming at each other, and it's always retarded on either side. So Stuttering John keeps messaging me on IG. I've never responded, and he's messaging me, let's take down Kumbia together. What do you say? And I'm like, I'm not getting involved. Because this is, uh, for those who don't know, Stuttering John has been taken by, like, this very soggy, gross, like low lying internet group of people, like a Mersh type yes, level like some of people, guy just are all commented, orbiting him at the moment. Some guy just said, Stuttering John content. Is this what are these podcasts? Exactly. And now, hopefully, maybe you've opened your ears. All right. So, okay. Because we talk about Stuttering John, Red Bar is above this. And they're saying, look, it, John wants to. Form an alliance with me. I want nothing to do with that. I don't give a fuck. I don't want this to be a thing that I do because that's what who are these podcasts does. And so they continue to talk about us. I don't even know what to make of this, to be honest with you. They don't want anything to do with him, obviously. I keep my ear to the ground. I know I actually know what's happening. They don't know. Team up with these fools. So, by the way, this who are these podcasts? You don't you're not allowed to listen to those shows, by the way. You were only allowed to harass those shows. So we catch you listening. There's punishments and doxings. So, um, yeah, who are these podcasts? It's, it's unbelievably junk. And Kumia loves it. By the way, if you think, uh, who are these podcasts? That's Kumia's friends. All right. So I guess okay. there's some uh, guilt by association there. If you can't like Kumia, no, this podcast, really doesn't like you. What's up no, with that? I'm not. I'm not. What did quite... you ever do to him? I'm not quite (laughs) sure what the issue is, but apparently if you like Red Bar, you're not allowed to watch and enjoy Who Are These Podcasts. Does that sound like what he just said? I'm not sure. I I don't understand. Who who is he implying is doing the harassing and doxing? I think he implied that he would do the harassing and doxing. If if his fans, the the Red Barians, the Red Barians, if they were to enjoy Who Are These Podcasts, I think he would dox them. For doing that. And that's the, I was confused too. I could be totally wrong about this. Maybe someone could explain this to me because that was weird. Does that make sense, Kai? Well, I, I don't know. I, I guess. All right. So this is more on why Who Are These Podcasts sucks. Kumi loves them because they do Kumi's dirty work. They go after these stuttering Johns and these people. Um, on Kumia's for Kumia, so that show's not very cool. Like they're going after John to get <laughs> Kumia's praise. Yikes! All right, so now he's just pulled a Chad Zumak. So I have to call him out on this one, uh, Mike David. Mm-hmm. Love you, buddy. This idea that the only reason why we talk about considering John is so that Anthony Kumia gives us an attaboy is retarded. That's a retarded thing to think or say, but that's. Literally what Chad Zumach said, too. It's like, oh, yeah, you know, who are these podcasts just kisses your ass? Because that's the only reason why they even have a successful show is because Anthony talks about you. Like, Anthony's behind a paywall. I don't know that that's why we're... And Anthony, no, like, you've been on Anthony's radar after, like, hundreds of episodes well, right. before these podcasts. Like, that's a show that, this show existed before Anthony Cumia. Correct. And also, Anthony's was always like with Opie. It was never the Stuttering John thing. I don't think that we were right. like, hey, Anthony, if I make fun of Stuttering John, will you be my friend? Because that wouldn't even make sense. <laughs> there wasn't a thing before that. Uh, John was on his show many times, so it's, it's kind of stupid. So speaking of Chad Zumach, now uh, he's been talking mm. about me quite a bit on his show from what I've heard. I guess not too long ago, he was praising me and saying that he loves these podcasts were really funny. And then as soon as I kind of said, fuck Chad, he's changed his tune, 
180. Kinda. 180. Yeah, I know. He's yeah, changed. you definitely tossed him out. <laughs> I did. He's changed his tune 180, though. And now he says that I suck and I'm not funny and I'm no good. And really? that's the problem with guys like Chad. Is they don't understand authenticity at all. It's like your audience isn't going to buy anything you say if you just change with the way the wind is blowing. And if I were to go on here and say, Chad Zumas doing a great thing, he would be like, yeah, Carl's awesome. Follow Carl. But I go, listen, Chad, you're a liar. You're, you're the one who has the sock accounts. Stop accusing others of having sock accounts. So I just go on and say that, and he immediately goes, Carl's not even funny. He fucking sucks. He's just kissing Kumia's balls. You're like, all right, Chad, we, we see what you're doing here. It's too obvious. He was bragging about being on your show. I know. I, know. I really listened to that episode after you, um, you know, talked about him on the last public episode, I think. Yeah. I went back to listen to the episode, which was episode, I don't know, some a show called Pauly, I think. Yes. For those of Paul you EMF. who would like to go back and listen. Very yep. hysterical. He doesn't let you get through the Stuttering John segment whatsoever. Mm-hmm. You actually have to kick him off the show. But throughout that entire show, he does the, I'm here on Who Are These Podcasts, man. I made it. And you didn't make it, OP. Fuck you. He but asked to be on the show. He reached out bragging. to me, Kaya. He was like, Carl, I want to come on your show. I want to do this thing. I'm like, all right, Chad, we'll do that. It's not like I was, it's not like Chad was on my radar. But whatever. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter. So, I want to credit the uh, Insufferable Bastards podcast because they did play a clip from Chad's show. I haven't listened to his show. I don't really care what he's saying because he's not a funny guy. The problem with Chad is that he goes after people and he's angry at them, but he's never funny. He doesn't know how to be funny when he does no, that. he's just angry. Yeah, he's just angry. So it doesn't translate into entertainment for most people. In the first clip, this is about 10 minutes into the podcast. I thought this was the most interesting part of the whole broadcast. It's 31 minutes long, but I'm going to play just like one or two clips from it. But he addresses, he starts off addressing Carl specifically with this comment. And by the way, don't act like the difference between me and you, I was popular in high school. Okay, I played sports. <laughs> All right, I'm going to pause it real quick. This, this is going to go on for a minute. This is going to get fun. So he's already stuttering John Jr. This is a 47-year-old man. He's older than I am. And he's already saying, dude, you think I suck? I was popular in high school. That's oh, sad. no. That is so sad. Chad, no, no. You can't be that stupid, are you? I was class clown, class cutest. I had that superlative. I will, I've always been around the cool kids. Your that crew is not cool. Oh, I know no. it's your your time to shine, and you think you're part of the cool kids now. Chrissy Mayer, <laughs> Alex Stein, and a fucking sixty three year old drunk Anthony Cumia, who may or may not have choked Vinny Brand's daughter. Your crew is not cool. Kaya, my crew isn't cool. Oh no, I'm doing everything wrong oh, in life. I thought you were cool. I shouldn't be hanging out with you. What if the other kids see? What if they see us hanging out? I know. Out? Like, Dude, if you want to go, I, I get it. Yeah, now I can't show my face at the playground. What the fuck? <laughs> and then he accuses you of, oh, he's hanging out with a 60-year-old drunk Anthony Cumia. Can you please play my clip 15 where he just sucks John's dick? Oh, you have a clip 15 about this guy? Yeah, I, I got the compilation from that one episode he was on your show where he just defends John. And I put them all together. You know what, Carl? Like, I I don't want to shit on John. He's always been cool to me. Like, okay. like I can't I can't shit on him. But John's like a nice guy, man. And he provided me a lot of entertainment when he was on Howard Stern, and he's done very well for himself. So I can't shit on the guy. He's been cool to me. Oof. He's promoted my shows. Like he'll he'll retweet whatever show I'm on. So I know him from the Howard Stern so show, and he was very funny on that show. Yeah. He's been cool to me yeah. and nice. I don't watch his comedy. I don't listen to his podcast, but he's just nice. I just hear myself in the background going, oh, yeah? Yeah, no, he's pretty cool. I know. Yeah, no, he's a really nice guy. Okay, will get And I love the the old school Howard Stern show, so he's just been nice to me. I don't know. Like, he retweets my tweets. I don't know. I, I, John? I'm literally laughing at him. He retweets your tweets? Fucking cool, Chad. I know. Good for you. I get it. That's awesome. John? He, he did something. And, like, Chrissy Mayer is, like, who is she? Like, compared to, like, John? Dude, I think everyone will love this episode. <laughs> People in the Discord are like, this guy has to be trolling you. <laughs> <laughs> he, th- he thought sorry John was doing better than Chrissy Mayer? Uh, <laughs> how did that work out for you? Whoops. 
And I'm sorry that was so long, but he kept doing this after every single stuttering John clip you would play, and also yeah. after every sentence he would speak. It would do this fucking, well, he was really cool. To, so is that the Cool Kids Club? Yes. Zach? Apper- retweeting is the Cool Kids uh, Club. Chad, sorry. Chad, Z-Man. Zach. He refers to himself yeah. as Z-Man. Z-Mock. Yeah. Holy shit. Well, I can't listen to that episode. I'm glad you pulled that together. I forgot how bad that was. I, no, at some point Chin, you, you like Yes and yes and one fucking time. Let's move on. Who cares? You like John, you it, hate Chrissy. Move on. You, you're trying to politely smile talk him through the segment, but you can tell that you're like in pain and at some point you're asking him if he's drunk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like and what's going on? You right make now? it sound like a joke, but I think it was a sincere question because he was being so fucking defensive of John. And so aggressively angry at Chrissy Mayer. Well, that's still happening, which I'm gonna get to, but let's get to the rest of mm-hmm. um why he's cool and we're not cool. That's not a cool crew. You guys aren't the cool kids. Also, he's out of breath. <laughs> he's not in good shape, this guy. <laughs> I don't think he's that healthy. But why are you podcasting while you're out of breath? What is he doing? And not one of you will approach me. Not one of you, because you're all fucking keyboard warriors and dorks. Oh, my God. Keyboard warriors and <laughs> dorks. I do live shows. In multiple cities, I'm not hiding behind my keyboard, Chad. I'll be down in Orlando again, in a couple it's weeks. it's a stuttering John thing. Like, if you have a problem with me, come up to yes. me in real life and let's see if you're still tough. Like, yeah, yeah, I don't want to fight. You're right. You got me. Got I just want to talk shit, not fight. Why would I fight you, douchebag? I just only, take a joke without getting aggressive. I only fight low cows in Portugal, so unless Chad can get his ass to Portugal, <laughs> we are not going to fight. Carl, I know you guys live in the little bubble, but you go around my crew, which is cool. <laughs> like going to New York, hanging out with Godfrey and Artie Fuqua, getting girls, and uh, that's cool. That's cool. This Friday, <laughs> Boca, like hanging out with Jim Brewer. That's fun. That's a good time. Sold out show. That's so now he's bragging about a sold out show. By the way, I bet his name isn't even on the ticket. He's opening for Jim Brewer. Jim Brewer sold out that show. You have nothing right. to do with that, Chad. In fact, I can tell you this. Vic Henley used to open for Ron White. All right. Do you see the difference there? Do you see the difference? It's, I've been noticing lately when you see these touring comedians who play theaters, they tend to bring the worst comedian with them. Because it makes them look so much better in comparison. I saw this happen with Tim right. Dillon. I've seen this happen with a number of comedians I've seen recently. Uh, Kathleen Madigan had the worst, corniest yeah, like opener. A, it's like when a cute chick keeps a fat one as a best yes. friend. It's like, you know, I'm actually a six, but you make me look like an eight. Yes, Chad. You make Jim Brewer's comedy an eight. That's how bad you are at comedy. <laughs> That's a cool crew. <laughs> A couple months ago, hanging out with Brewer and Florentine in Naples. That was fun. That's a good crew. I've hung out with Jim Florentine, too. I think he's pretty cool. I agree with you. Rochester? (laughs) Your boys? That's not a cool crew. You guys aren't cool. Nothing cool about you. (laughs) (laughs) And He's making some good points. He got me there. I'm not going to sit here and be like, Rochester's a cool crew. That's true. It's not a cool crew. You guys aren't cool. Nothing cool about you. And I guarantee that half room, I, I want to see the attendance because they'll probably be little to none. I guarantee they all come up to me and talk to me. It's just those lists. I know you try to manipulate and control the narrative. I know you're the king of Reddit. You're the king of uh, fake accounts. All right, Chad, this projection mm. is insane. I don't have any fake accounts. I don't have a reason to. There's thousands of people right. on Reddit. Most of them tell me I suck. <laughs> but a couple of right. fake accounts is not going to help me in any which direction on that one. But that's a, that's the only people who have fake accounts think that way. I don't even think that way. I would never accuse someone of having fake accounts unless I knew for a fact they did, Chad Zumach. I know for a fact you have fake accounts and sock accounts. Well, he's so out of breath, too. Yeah. It's so distracting. that He's like moaning into the mic going... <sighs> You're not cool. <gasps> yeah, this is... Sit down. Th- this Sit down, isn't rest embarrassing. for five minutes, then record. This is embarrassing. This is someone who is breaking. Like, this is, this is again, not though, healthy. It's so, 
mind blowing to me. I wish I had compiled a clip of him sucking your dick too, because there was so much fucking fangirling over. Not, yeah. even, not really praising you, but so much more bragging that he's on your show. Yeah, when he was on. So you were the cool kid too. And years he's asked ago. to come on multiple times since then. I've gotten. I could show the emails where he's like, "Come, can I come on your show and talk about this? Can I come on your show and talk about that?" He wanted me on my show so bad, but why? I'm a nerd. I'm not part of the cool <laughs> club, Chad. Why do you want to be on this yeah, show? Yeah, I got Wichita in high school. What are you gonna do? Cool it up for me? You gonna help me out? Get some coolness going for me? But make no mistake about it, I am the best comedian in that club that evening. All right, what he's talking about right now is mm. the comedians of the compound are playing a show in Orlando to kick off that 48 hour live stream I was talking about. I'll, I'll be down in Orlando next weekend, and Thursday night, there's a comedy show with Anthony Cumia, Chrissy Mayer, Gino Bisconti, and Alex Stein. And Chad so desperately wants to be there, which I'm going to get to, but he also wants to announce that he's funnier than all of those people. Okay, he's that's not. the facts. When I go to the Orlando Improv on the 27th, I am the best comedian in the club that night. The best. Here's a fact. And do your little research, your little homework. I worked more this year as a stand-up comedian as Chrissy, Kevin Brennan, and Gino combined. The three of them combined. I guarantee I made more money doing stand-up comedy than the three of them combined did. All right, that's how I know okay. you're a loser when you bring up I made more money. This is what Ethan Ralph said to me when I was on the Dick Show a few weeks ago. I make more money than you. I'm like, mm. do you know how much money I make? Because that's a stupid thing to say. I'm not saying I make a shit ton of money, but you can't say I make more money than you unless you know how much money they make. Otherwise, you just. Embarrassing. It's embarrassing. Oh. It's an embarrassing It's embarrassing to, to brag about. It makes you, yeah. even if it was true, makes you look like a douche. Who the fuck yes. brags about their goddamn like money? It's usually everyone else who brings up, uh, you know, the amount of money you make. And it's usually people who are very self conscious about the money they make. Like when yes. Stuttering John brings up Anthony's income. Yep. Like, oh, you made millions and yada, yada, yada. You live in such a nice house. It's like the guy wasn't bragging about why, why are you even bringing up his house? Rich That's people do not talk you're about how much money they have. About I, yeah, I never hear to. rich people say I make more money than you because they know it. They don't have to announce it. They know it. And so does everyone else. So Chad saying he makes in, in more fact, money from stand up. Yeah, oftentimes they'd rather keep it a secret because yes. they don't feel comfortable with everybody knowing that they're like, you know, come rob my house. I'm rich. <laughs> also, the brag is that he makes more money from stand up, but he's the opener for Brewer and Florentine, so it has nothing to do with him. Yeah, good for you. I'm glad that you're opening for these guys who have a fan right, base. You're a barnacle. Yes. You're a barnacle in a ship hull. Like, right. You're not actually swimming yourself. Chrissy Mayer's headlining. She actually go out and in other by, cities and headline. That's very different from what you're doing, Chad. By the way, I don't know if you were planning on playing that um, his stand-up because I you am. sent me a clip right before the show. Yeah. Okay, then I'll hold my I, tongue. I have clips then. of it because normally okay. I wouldn't goof on someone's stand-up, but the fact that Chad is going on and on about how he's the funniest guy and he's the best at mm -hmm. stand-up. Before I do that, though... I have to break down these phone calls Chad made to the Anthony Cumia show because what happened was last week on Monday, I called into the show because they started talking about Chad. Chrissy Mayer was on. So I called in. We all started goofing on Chad a little bit. And so Tuesday comes around and Anthony went on the Legion of Skanks after that. He got very drunk that night. He comes in Tuesday, very hungover. <laughs> he seems miserable. And then Chad calls in. Listen to this reaction from Anthony when he sees the Chads on the phone. Is that, that is it? Is this? It really is. <laughs> uh, okay, I'm really hungover. So let's see. Uh, Chad, Anthony, how's it going? I, I'm sorry I didn't call in yesterday, but like a majority of your subscribers, I usually skip Chrissy Mayer Mondays. Oh, like a majority of the subscribers. Uh, I don't know, Chad. People seem to enjoy Chrissy Mayer on here. So that's the first thing he opens with. And on the screen, it says, on the phone, Chad, and then it says underneath him, stayed up all night thinking of that one. So even the guys <laughs> in the booth who are running the show are goofing on Chad. And <laughs> Chad gets right into, immediately, he's going to call out Anthony for not hanging with the cool kids. This is how Chad thinks. Chad thinks he's a senior in high school still. 
Well, that's another thing, you know, because I know you guys were uh, talking about me or whatever, and that's fine, but back in the day, Anthony Cumi was hanging out with Louie, Bill Burr, Nick DiPaolo. Now your posse's Carl and Chrissy. That's a, that's a weak posse. That's my posse. All right, this is a, a great comeback for Anthony. So he says, you know, Anthony, you're lame because you hang out with Carl and Chrissy. I First of all, I, I don't really have a posse, but that's okay. And um, a couple of weeks ago, uh, I was hanging out with Shane Gillis and Joe Rogan. <laughs> Whoops. You didn't think that went through, did you, Chad? He was just in Vegas with Joe Rogan and Shane Gillis. Right, there's photos of them together. Yeah, they're And also, they're again, gives pool. a shit, like... Adults don't make decisions on who to be friends with based on how cool they are to the public. Who gives the fuck? <laughs> My friends aren't the, cool and I'm not you, cool. You use a specific word there, adults. You're correct. Right. Adults He's just enjoy people. He's a typical, like, high school peaked and high school, you yeah. know, the f- quarterback. And now yeah. that's all he has. Now he's basically a janitor. Yeah, he's at a, a comedy he's club that they sometimes trot out on stage. He's literally a Chad at this <laughs> yeah, point. It's pretty funny. Has been Chad. Yep. Peaked in high school. So this is the most embarrassing thing he says to Anthony on this call. Well, Anthony, you know I'm a true friend because I'm the only one that doesn't kiss your ass. Nobody, nobody else, Kevin, Chrissy, Carl, Gino, I'm the only one that doesn't kiss your ass. I am a true friend. I don't want nothing from you. I don't want to profit off of you. You're, you're a friend first. Chad declares that he's the only true friend to Anthony. And Chad, I have bad news for you. Uh, you're not Anthony's friend. You know, I know that Anthony told me he doesn't like you. <laughs> no one likes you, Chad. You're not liked. You can't declare that you're someone's good friend when they don't like you. This is like, I, I imagine this is what the DMs look like between the simps and the OnlyFans girls. Like, <laughs> you're my one. best friend. And the girl goes, uh... <laughs> <laughs> no, no I, I like you for your personality. I'm not like the other guys. I don't care right. about your, your breast size. I don't care right. about the size of your wallet. So that, again, that's really pathetic. And there's, again, there's a parallel here to Suttering John, who once declared that Artie and him are good friends. Artie Lang and him are good friends. And it's funny because right. Artie Lang came out and said, I am not friends with John. I don't like that guy. And John's like, yeah, yes, we are. We're friends. Jen, he just said he doesn't like you. That means you're not friends. Yeah, here's how we can tell if you're friends with someone. If you have to use public means of communication to talk to them. Like, yeah. If you can't talk to, with them in private, you have to call into their show, or you mm-hmm. have to have this debate on Twitter, whether yep. you're friends. If you have to have a debate over whether you're friends, yep. you're not friends. All right, so that happened Fucking on weirdos. Tuesday of last week. This week, Anthony's back on, on the air. And a caller who's just getting caught up on his uh, shows from last week calls in a little concerned for our friend Chad Zumach. Last week, I missed the first couple of days of the show, and I listened to it over the weekend. Yeah. And that, dude, that Zumach dude, it, my ex had, like, two mental breakdowns. <laughs> and you learn the signs, what to look for. Oh, wow, yeah, yeah. Dude, that guy is going to, I'm like, Literally worried you're going to be at an event when he was talking about coming to your event. Yeah, yeah. And like, he's going to pull a Pantera on you. Like, <laughs> you've got to have people watch him. Dimebag Daryl. All right, so this caller goes, this guy is losing touch with reality. You mm-hmm. might want to take precaution. He's saying that he's coming to the stand-up show that nobody wants him at. So I don't know if Chad was watching or listening or if his buddy told him this happened. But then Chad calls into the show. And again, listen to how reluctant Anthony has to even pick up on this fucking asshole. Chad, what's up? Do you really think I'm going to do something? Like, I'm going to try to kill you? Really? Did I, did I say that, Chad? So, d- he's a little misinformed. Did you really think I'm going to kill you? And uh, meanwhile, I'd be thinking, like, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. I honestly don't Why know. Not? You seem a little unhinged. I don't know what's going on. So Anthony's right. very polite. He goes, well, a caller said that he had experience with someone and you know the way you were acting and things you were saying got the sense that maybe that was what was going on. So now this is the second time he's called in and explained he's coming to the show. And Anthony's kind of alluded to the fact that, like, well, maybe you shouldn't. Maybe people don't watch you at the show. <laughs> so Chad declares that he will be coming to this show. Yeah, I'm coming to review the show. I am a reviewer. <laughs> what do you mean? I want to review the show. The for for who? 
For you? I'm going to write a, a blog. Oh, okay. Well, that sounds good. I hope it's fair and balanced. Yeah, so that's why I'm coming. I just want to review a comedy show, and that's right. it. And everyone will be safe. Now, Chad, let me, let me, let me just make sure you uh -huh. know this. Yes, sir. There are people that book the show, run the show, run the club. That yeah, I, might... I, there. I get 1099s from there. <laughs> All right. <laughs> he's not he's not picking up on any of this shit. <laughs> so it's funny again. <laughs> the people in the booth row on the phone, Chad, and underneath it is that can't take a hint. Like Chad, we don't want you. He's like, no, yeah. but I, I know the owner. I've worked at that club before. It's like, yeah, but this specific show is being run by Chrissy. And Frank, and you've done nothing but shun them for going back to my show that you were already pointing out. He's been doing that consistently since then. It's like, you're not welcome. You're not welcome. Why do you want to go someplace where you're not welcome? Cool kids don't do that. Cool kids don't go to a party they don't, they're right. not welcome at. They're invited. That's, that's how you know you're <laughs> a cool kid. Especially the nerds party. How yeah. many cool kids have tried to break into the nerds birthday party? Right. But can I be a part of this? Right. This is <laughs> right. Thank you, Kaya, because what we've just witnessed is Chad saying, I want nothing to do with these guys. Chrissy sucks. Anthony sucks. Carl's a nerd. And then he's like, but I'm going to come to your guy's show. I got to be at your show. We can't be both, mm. Chad, which is, I thought you had your cool click that you ran with that you were all confident about. All right. So this is a, more of Chad insisting he'll be at this show. But there might be so, somebody on the bill that kind of doesn't want you there. But I'm buying a ticket. Yeah, I know. The back of the ticket probably says, you know, all people are subject to get the fuck out if someone wants you to get the fuck out kind of a thing. Well, that's all I'm saying. All I'm saying is be ready. And if it does happen, don't you go and throw fucking Molotov into the club. <laughs> Chip, you're not going to be welcome there. And when that happens, please don't shoot up the place. <laughs> if you can help it. I, we really appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> he has a blog too. It's like the perfect rights manifesto and shoots up a place. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So again, Chad goes, I'm buying a ticket. I'm going to be at the show. And it's like, please, Chad. Oh my God. How are you not picking up on the all, every signal we're putting out there? Like, don't come. We don't want you there. So this is more of Anthony trying to explain why they might not want you there. Now, again, Chrissy's fiance, Frank is a guy who's not a public figure that Chad goes after and says he has all these sock accounts and he's up to no good. Again, all projection. Frank, it doesn't do any of the things that Chad accuses him of. I don't know. I don't know what people are going to do. I don't know what other people that have put this gig together, like Chrissy. You think Frank is a fan of, of Chad Zumach? You think Frank wants you sitting there staring at, at Chrissy, uh, uh, after all the bullshit that's gone down, maybe Frank will say, hey, I don't want this fucking guy in the club. Just I don't know. The Clintons of comedy? The Clintons of comedy? I don't know, Chad Zumach. I don't oh, know. <laughs> He's so fed up. He's like, I listen, just don't come. We just don't want you. So Chad's going, he has this thing where he says that Chrissy and Frank are the Clintons of comedy. Now remember, what does that mean? Chrissy's not shit. She, she doesn't do anything. She's not funny. She's not talented. It's like, well, the Clintons were the most powerful people in the world. So right. which is it? Are Chrissy and Frank like this? Are they running comedy in the U.S.? What do you think is going on here? He's very, he's yeah, very confused Clintons with his were, own points. The Clintons were definitely in the cool kids club <laughs> yes. among their own. Yeah, yeah, like, That's true. To the point where Bill it? fucked a fat chick. Everyone knew it. We still like, yeah, but it's cool. <laughs> we saw him on a scooter. We're still just like, yeah, but he's one of us. It's fine. We'll let it go. <laughs> All right. This is the last clip I have from these calls to Anthony's show. And this is the most ominous one of all. Well, this isn't going to be a, a, a fun evening if I get thrown out. I'll say that right now. Oh, see, now that Chad Zumok sounds like a threat. No, it just see, doesn't seem like a fun evening if I have to drive home after getting thrown out. Well, not fun for you. They don't do but it. But it'll be fun for the people that came to see the show and us doing it. But I'm the best comedian in that building that evening. Oh, Chad. Stand-up comedian, pound for pound, I will follow any one of you, including the king himself. All right. 
So that was really odd, right, to say it's not going to be a fun evening if I'm kicked out. Chad, just don't come. It's an hour and a half drive from Tampa. Just don't come. No one wants you there. It's, They're probably not going to let you in. to say you're going to be the funniest comedian in the building. You're not there as a comedian. You you're just said you're going to be there as a reviewer. Right. Yeah. So what does that have to do with anything? I don't care how funny you are if you're in the audience. Your job is to sit there and shut the fuck up. The last thing I would do, there, there's a few music clubs that are close to my house, and they have some shitty bands there sometimes. The last thing I would do is show up and be like, I'm a better guitarist than everyone in here. Do you guys fucking suck? Right. Like, what, why? <laughs> What's, what, what good does that do? What, what purpose does that serve? Chad, you idiot. So, because he's declaring himself the world's greatest comic and so much funnier than everyone else on this bill, I thought we could check out a little bit more of his dry bar comedy special he's promoting to find out Please. what he's up to. Yes. Chad will be the funniest comic in the room at the Orlando Improv if they decide to let him in. Let's check out some of his jokes <laughs> here. This is from mm-hmm. his latest special. It starts off with him talking about what a loser he is. And, of course, referring to himself in the third person using his cool radio nickname, The Z-Man. I'll tell you a little about, about The Z-Man. Uh, yeah, I'm in my 40s. <laughs> never been married, never had a kid. No one's happy for me. Nobody. <laughs> Nobody. I always thought you are 40s, never been married, never had a kid. You're a catch. Turns out you're 40s, never been married, never had a kid. You're not a catch. People look at you like you're a suspect. Chad, you are a suspect. That's specifically what you are. And also that there's a reason for it. That's not even like funny. That's just sad. Like, yes, women instinctually, when they look at a 40-year-old man who's never like had a stable relationship and he's completely alone and no other woman wants anything to do with him, they, they know. Yeah, like, there's a red flag there. Yeah, it's a warning sign. Yeah, if, if nobody wants you, then maybe I should also stay away from you. Right. Yes, exactly. And sub- the- by the way, I would like to point out to audio listeners, he's wearing his own shirt. Like a yeah, yeah, he's too. also wearing a Z-Man shirt. The Z-Man from yeah. Ken, Ohio. So this is one of the things, too. He's got a basketball on it. Because remember, he played sports in high school. So he's no, still holding oh, on to course. that. <laughs> I don't think he's seen a court in a few uh, years, but he's still holding on to that. The thing that I've noticed about Chad's stand-up comedy, I never paid attention before until he started declaring himself such a great comic. They All of his jokes lack a punchline. You notice that? No, they're just real. They're just Yeah, it's just like, hey, guys, like, I'm I'll a loser. You play, play no one likes me. More and th- it's uncomfortable, though. Like, There's a fine line between self-deprecating humor and... Just going on stage and actually just talking about how much you hate yourself. Like, somebody like yeah. Bill Burr does does that well, right? He talks right. about how he's a ginger, he's balding, he has anger issues that always cause problems in his marriage. But he also has things where, like, you can tell he doesn't hate himself. He's actually kind of proud of the kind of person he is. But once in a while, he takes a gut punch to himself. Chad actually is up there. He's like, yeah, I'm a fucking loser. Like, I'm going to die alone. Yeah. My bloodline is ending with me. Please laugh. So this is the thing that I wrote down in my notes. In order to be a stand-up and be successful, you have to be likable. That is the one thing that all stand-ups need to have is likability. Chad is a villain. It's impossible to get behind this guy. So when you see him, even if he's just, hey, I'm just joking and making jokes, people pick up on what's actually going on. They're like, oh, I don't like this guy. There's something about I, his I think demeanor. there are a lot of people who like him, but it's losers like him. If I checked out the comment section on that video, he okay. has a lot of fans, actually. A lot of people going, this guy is spitting the truth. This guy is way too relatable. I'm a woman and I can relate to him. Oh, no. And on and on it goes about people talking about how much trouble they're having in their 40s dating. It's like, well, <laughs> I'm sorry, but if you're 40 fucking years old and you don't have anyone in your life and no prospects, it's over. <laughs> All right, Probably so it's over. At the New York show, we played the trailer to this comedy special. And in the trailer, it was all about this Walmart in Tampa that apparently is a little white trashy, Kaya. That was his big joke. He talked oh, on and on about this Walmart and how trashy it was. So in this, he does a callback to that. And then the most embarrassing thing I've ever seen during a stand-up performance happens. I'm not dating right now. Anyone here dating? <laughs> You know why? Because there's nothing left. (laughs) There's nothing left. Dating right now is like going to the Tampa Walmart on Dale Mabry. There's nothing left. (laughs) Thank you. Please clap. I, I, I force applause breaks. I force them. 
please clap. <laughs> he literally <laughs> Jeff Bush is, please clap during his stand up special. Kai, I've never seen it. I watch a lot of stand up. I have never seen that before. <laughs> no, you know why? Yikes. Because they cut that out usually. Like the things like that, you would cut even if that accidentally slipped out of your mouth that's in funny. a low moment. You're right. You would tell the editor, okay, that's not going in the Netflix edition. You're right. That, yeah. That's because Dry Bar is just like, yeah, we're not going to put too much effort into this. It's, we'll just put it out. It's fine. Wow. Oof, that is sad. And the way he talks about it, like, there's nobody left for people like us to, us losers. It's yeah. like, you know how in animal documentaries, they always have that segment about the animal's mating life, and it'll mm-hmm. be like five monkeys competing for one woman or something. And then they always zoom in on, on one of the loser monkeys, like, tonight, Charlie is going to bed alone. <laughs> like, oh, this is sad. Chad is the loser monkey. And yeah. what's great is that in the next joke, like you can't even feel sorry for him or get behind him because then in the next joke, he talks about dating on Tinder or using apps. And he immediately decides that he's too good for all the girls on there. That's what I do. I go for it. I swing for the fences, kids. I see you up there. Take a chance. <laughs> I'm on date. What was that move? I, 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 don't know I don't know if he meant for that to be a joke, if he was ad-libbing. But he's like, oh, I go for it. I swing for the fences. And then he starts doing a little dance for some reason. Like he's on t- TikTok or something. <laughs> I'm on dating apps. Anybody else on these nightmares? <laughs> yeah, you have to download an app to find your love now. So you have to swipe right and left all day long. Right le- right if you like them, left if you don't. So I'm like laughed, laughed, laughed like you're not good enough. Laughed. That's what I do all day. Laughed, laughed, laughed. I'm afraid I'm going to go into real life, like go to a bar, see a woman, and just swipe left like you're not good enough. You know, it's not funny, but, um, but you know, I get it. Good one. See what I mean? Okay. He's unlikable. You- he's he's like, oh, I get on these apps. I'm like, everyone sucks. Everyone sucks. Chad. I'll give you a pro tip. Nobody goes on Tinder to find love. It's an app where hot people fuck. That's right. it. It's an app that, uh, you know, 90% of the people that install it, they get swiped left on. And the remaining 10%, they just meet up and fuck. And it's the hot people. That's he's it. projecting it's again. You, he's the one getting getting left swiped on. He's projecting yet again. He's acting like he's the one who holds oh, all the cards. You just know he buys Tinder Plus or Gold or Ultra or whatever the fuck it's called, so he gets more left swipes too. And uh, you know how they always well, say, "Well, I know okay, he buys we'll Twitter followers. Profile and shit. Yeah, I'm, sh- I'm yeah. sure he does because he wants to be a celebrity. He's pretending to be a celebrity, so I'm sure he does do that. Look at me. I got twenty thousand followers. Up oh, now it's seventeen thousand. Hold on, give me a day. I'll get it back up. The audacity to, like, left swipe when you're him. Dude, you're in your 40s and you're performing at tiny bars for an audience of no one where you're asking for applause. I know people like this in real life, too, like, where they will somehow have standards for women still. Yeah. Character, personality-wise, I get it. Yeah, you should have standards, but looks-wise, buddy, come, like, look at yourself. Yeah, no, he's, he's not doing well. So he finally does earn applause in this next clip, but it's only because he's self-deprecating in the right way on this one. Okay, I've been doing this for 17 years because I had a dream when I was a child. I wanted to make 3,600 a year, so I made that come true. Thank you. Thank you, Nicholas Foundation. I didn't force that applause break. I earned it. Yeah, people were laughing at you for making less than $4,000 a year because they believe it. The guy who was bragging about how much money he makes has a joke about making no money. 47 years old, been doing stand-up for 17 years, still makes no money. And that's what people laugh at. Like, yeah, that is pathetic. <laughs> uh, look at that man's face. He's just, he he's feeling better about himself yes. right now. He's like, fuck yeah. Like, he's making me look so much better to my wife. That guy's like, I make 10 times him. that much. I make $36,000 <laughs> a year. All what right. a loser. I want lo- Hey, honey, get a load of the loser on stage. Not like me. <laughs> Not By like, the way, again, like the hypocrisy, he says he ca- you know accuses Anthony Cumia of uh, hanging out with losers and not the cool kids, and then yeah. he goes on stage and talks about just exclusively about how what the loser he is. Yeah, which is it? Oh, this guy has no direction. I, well, that's what I'm telling you. He's breaking. He's cracking. It's not going well for him. We're we're witnessing this in real time where he's having a mental breakdown. He doesn't. He's made a lot of bad decisions in his career. It's not working out for him. It's not going to happen. And he's having a hard time coming to grips with that. 
And that's my favorite time to bounce. <laughs> I'm a bad person. All right, this is my last clip that I have right here. And this is the windup to this punchline. There's like, it, it's kind of Tom Myers esque. There's a little too much going on to get to this joke. And I'm like, where do you want to go? And she's like, let's do something fun. I'm like, all right, let's have fun. She's like, you know what would be fun? I'm like, what? A buffet. <laughs> I'm like, what? A buffet. I call my buddy Chuck. I'm like, she wants to go to an all-you-can-eat buffet. He's like, she sounds awesome. <laughs> I'm like, no, she sounds pregnant. <laughs> like, who goes to an all you can eat buffet date on a date, let alone a first date? You know how that date ends? Diarrhea. Who's with me? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes. All right, I want to point something out. So the joke was, how does that date end? Diarrhea. Diarrhea is the punchline. And then he says, who's mm-hmm. with me, which is a Dave Attell thing to do. But what Dave Attell does, is he goes, who's with me? And then he moves on to the next thing because he's already set up the next joke because people are laughing at the last joke because he's a professional comedian. This asshole steals, steals Dave Attell's thing and then basks in the glory of his diarrhea <laughs> joke. You know how that date ends? Diarrhea. Who's with me? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes. <laughs> I forced that applause break. In my 40s, I wrote a diarrhea joke and I got an applause break. My life rules. It's the only time he's funny is when he explains, wow, I'm a fucking loser. And everyone's like, well, yeah. <laughs> no yeah. shit. We're also picking up on that vibe, Chad. Yeah, you, you, you're right about funny that. Funny in like a good way, though. And also, Chad. there was a recent tweet that Chad put out. So Chad likes to pretend he's a big shot. He's a celebrity and we're nerds and he's in the cool club. This guy has... 17,000, 18,000 followers on Twitter. He put out a tweet, happy birthday at Artie Quitter. So he's he's tweeting at Artie Lang. And in his tweet, there's four photos of him with Artie. This is he's oh. making it all about him. He's not wishing Artie happy birthday. He's trying to show everyone I'm friends with Artie Lang. See? This is me with mm-hmm. Artie. And one of those photos is him on the Artie and Anthony show when Artie was the co-host with Anthony. And I remembered how bad of a showing that was. And I went, oh, we should probably break that one down. Thanks for reminding me, Chad. You made a fool of yourself with (laughs) Artie and Anthony. I think we'll definitely do that show coming up real soon. And by the way, Chad, I know you're putting out all these episodes talking about me. You want my attention. You're pretending to be fake email accounts and emailing me. Oh, Chad's killing you, Carl, with with links. I will never listen to your podcast. I don't give a fuck about your podcast. Your podcast. But you're getting emails? Oh, yeah. I know Chad doesn't have any fans. So when I get an email from someone saying, dude, you shouldn't go after Chad. He's crushing him. Like, Chad's never been funny in his life. I'm not afraid of this guy. I know he's a loser. That's great. Oh, it's hilarious. What is this I'm hearing, by the way, about him stealing credit cards? Is that just a joke? It's not a joke. It's not a joke. Really? He was arrested for stealing credit cards out of people's lockers in the gym. And I've seen the documentation oh. on this. He goes out to a CVS and spends 32 bucks. And then he goes and get, grabs a sandwich at Chili's. And then he goes, it's like, th- he goes on like this weird white trash shopping spree. Like, uh, like if you, that is the dumbest way to use a stolen credit card. Right. How the fuck? Yeah. He, he buys a bunch of shit and goes through every fucking surveillance camera there is. So it's just like, <laughs> Hey, there's a fraudulent charge at CVS. It's at 1143. They're like, do you have a uh, camera that like, yeah, we got like 20 cameras. Yeah. What do you want to watch? Like, oh, there he is. There's the oh guy I go, I go to the gym with. Like, he's so fucking stupid. Like, that's not how you What's use stolen credit ago? cards. Uh, a couple of years ago. Pretty recent. <laughs> is, that a, retard, Jesus. is that incredible? All right. So I have that's to. pretty fucking stupid. Next time, just go online and buy Monero or Bitcoin or something. Right. You want to buy gift cards. I, listen, I do this on the creep all yeah, the time. Not... I tell people how to, to do crimes better. You buy gift cards with it. And then, then it's like money laundering. You can't trace it back. It's great. Fucking idiot. Wear a hoodie to the store, idiot. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So this is the last video that I want to play for you. Somebody put this together and it's brilliant. And when I say somebody, I should definitely give them credit. But this is the new show. This is the dream team right here. I would watch this show. I would subscribe to the show. I would get outside for their Patreon. I would give them money. This looks amazing. I want it to be true. 
baby. All right, Greg, how are you, pal? Good morning to everybody and welcome. And uh, let's do this. A little zen, a little zen in the morning and a little cheers. And Ted Zumak, how are you, pal? Just because this is a red solo cup, it doesn't mean it's booze. It's uh, lemonade. Well, whatever. Whatever. Oh, I keep so. telling people I'm handsome. <laughs> <laughs> First sip of coffee, baby. Uh, I'm so happy that you guys are here. I there wanted to take that first sip about an hour ago when I woke up, but I like taking the first sip on the live stream. Uh, uh, what the hell? I was going to post my link. Well, I'll just say it. What is it? Uh, ah, you know what? I'll post the link if you want to donate to me and the program as we continue. How are you, Greg? All right, Greg, nothing better than a mic that don't work. <laughs> All right, Greg, I can't hear you, my brother. Something, hit, turn your computer mic on. <laughs> All right. If you want to fix it, just, uh, you might have to log back in and then, you know, and, you know, fix it and then log back in, okay? All right, don't worry, Greg, I have time. In the meantime, uh, Chad Zumok, as you all know, uh, oh, I have my shirt on backwards. <laughs> all right. Naked moment, everybody. Here we Ew. go. I want in on you. Oh, what are those Here discolorations? Naked moment for everybody to Why see. Why is it discolored? Uh, don't worry. The camera adds 15 to 20 pounds. It felt like it was Ugh. on backwards. <laughs> Ew, look how dirty it All is. All right, back, yeah. to, back to normal. Ugh. Ew. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, Chad uh, has made the Cool Kids Club. <laughs> yeah, there it is, Chad. You are right Why did they up look there. like one of the village people in that? <laughs> Chad is right up there with uh, Opie and Cedric John. The three of them put a show together. I swear to God, it would be... At least for a week, the most popular show on the internet. It would trend very quickly if they did that. Who are these podcasts? W A 